Welcome to season two of Virtually Live. It is April 14th, 2021. I awoke today to second day in a row to a dusting of snow. <laughs> kind of that time of year when nobody thinks, oh, I should go birding in the bog. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna check it out, see what we can find. Oh, golden crowned kinglets, that really, really high pitched little trill. Ravens, they should be on eggs or feeding young by now. So yeah, we're gonna do some exploration today. And I wanna share some cool sightings I had in the last, uh, well, a couple from last winter that I didn't get to share with you. And a couple from just a few days ago. Uh, the roads are, the roads are wonderful. One of my goals today, ooh, rough road, uh, would be to get video of dancing sandhill cranes. And they have kind of a very kind of elaborate courtship dance where they're jumping and leaping and flapping their wings and bowing and throwing their heads back. I've only seen it a couple times and only got a few seconds on video. So that would be great because I do have a spot for that in the film we're making called Boreal Wings. It's uh, about the superpowers that birds have in the North Woods that allow them to survive and thrive here. two cranes right out here with a pair of Canada geese and uh, but they must be already solidly pair bonded uh, no dancing going on right now yeah but did you hear their call I mean how loud is that and they you know their their trachea is kind of twisted and looped I suppose like a musical instrument it enables them to create this very loud sound same with trumpeter swans, they have that same kind of looped, convoluted trachea. We also try to be a good neighbor in the Sag Zimbog area. And so we've adopted a two mile stretch of County Road 133. We've got a litter cleanup uh, coming up in late April here. And we also do one in the, in the fall. Not exciting or glamorous work, but it's important to be a good neighbor. A visitor reported a great gray owl along the boardwalk here. So 
Uh, so let's go check it out. They could be nesting anywhere in the bog where there's an old raptor nest they could use, a red-tailed hawk or raven nest or broad-winged hawk nest. So they are here year-round. I wanted to share with you this cool experience I had this winter. I was out in a spot where I normally don't go and I normally don't see great grays there, but I, I did this time. And it was perched, 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 waiting, waiting, waiting. All of a sudden it jumped off that perch, flying kind of right towards me. And then I had a revelation because we know that great grays can see, I mean, sorry, here, a vole under two feet of snow from about a hundred yards away, but they don't pinpoint it exactly from a hundred yards away. And you can see this one coming and he's got those facial discs pointing down in the snow. He made a little adjustment, made a little turn, went down, plunged, and caught a vole. <laughs> so it was a, just a neat experience to see them adjusting in mid-flight and you know, just deadly pinpoint accuracy and plucking that vole from under <laughs> deep snow. Well, it's getting a little rainy, so maybe we'll have to divide this virtually live up into two days because I don't like to burden this. So, yeah, let's uh, meet back here in the bog in a couple days. All right. Well, welcome back to, I guess you call this part two of virtually live one of season two which is actually virtually live 16. does that make sense it is april 19th and part one of this one was filmed on april 14th but we got rained out and uh we had some snow that day and once again april 19th had a little snow last night so crazy but april 14th was exactly one year from when the first virtually live dropped in 2020 so pretty cool here we are at Nichols Lake
little raft of ringneck ducks out here. And ringneck ducks, they nest in little ponds, often in the boreal forest, uh, beaver ponds, and really small lakes. They're not a big lake duck, but they are a diving duck, which is kind of cool. <laughs> They're diving in these little ponds. I think we missed a lot of the duck migration, even though we're starting exactly one year from when I did the first Virtually Live, and we had some uh, a nice selection of ducks. But spring came a little early, and the lakes thawed and further north, and so I think they just pushed on through. Let's scan out here, see if we can find anything else. Of course, ring-necked ducks is kind of a bad name, like a lot of bird common names. But uh, in the hand, you can kind of see that ring around the neck, it's rarely in photos. But, you know, in the breeding season, they have a ring around the bill. They also have that little white crescent. So maybe something like ring-billed bog duck. I don't, I don't know. It is windy, cold, maybe 32 degrees, 30 degrees, with about 15 mile an hour west winds. I'm driving down Nichols Lake Road. There's birds here. We're gonna find some. I'm sitting along a ditch along Nichols Lake Road. You never know what you might see. All kinds of critters use these. I had a really cool experience in early April. I think maybe it was April 1st. And I had a mink hunting along the shore, and they're a very aquatic weasel. They have that beautiful white patch on their breast, and they eat a lot of crayfish, small fish, uh, mice, voles, but uh, they're often, of course, next to water. So I had a good time with him, and then about 10 minutes later, a river otter. <laughs> uh, the largest weasel we have in Minnesota, and they also eat crayfish and small fish, so that was pretty cool to get two of them within about 10 minutes of each other. You never know what you might see. All kinds of critters use these ditches that have crayfish and fish in them. They kind of treat them like uh, a small creek. So keep your eyes open as you're driving some of these roads with these flowing ditches. April is a great time to see porcupines in the Saxon bog, mainly because of what you're seeing here. The buds and catkins are coming out on the willows and aspens, and, and uh, they crave those. And so even in the middle of the day, they'll climb up and, you know, usually not that far above the ground to feast on these, on these buds and catkins. And that's what this guy's doing now. Ooh, hands are freezing.
A little quiet today at the Bob Russell Bog Walk, but hey, that's okay. We don't have to look at birds all the time. <laughs> we can enjoy the sound of silence. And I don't think the uh, snow-covered ground and uh, below freezing temps help with bird migration today. But hey, if I had to give a superstar bird of this two-day trip, the 14th and today is the 19th, I'm going to give it to that female blackback woodpecker we saw on the 14th at Warren Wussner Boardwalk. Yeah, that was pretty cool because you don't often see them in the spring. They're busy nesting, which makes me wonder if there's a nest around there. Superstar mammal. Well, I told you about the mink and the otter. I don't know if those count because that was on April 1st. So I'm going to give it to today's porcupine because he was very... Uh, friendly. He was not too afraid of me and just busy eating in catkins. So yeah, superstar mammal of the day porcupine. A couple other things I wanted to tell you about is we are back in business with field trips. Uh, we're gonna limit them to five cars so you will stay in your own car but they're filling up fast so get to our website and sign up. May 1st is things that go buzz, croak, hoot, and bump in the night which is an evening field trip and we're gonna have to see if we can hear and see things like snipe and bittern and woodcock. And then mid-May, our Warbler Wednesdays start up again. And Clinton has a webinar this Thursday about his and Frank's kestrel research in the Sagzim bog. So check it out. Well, that is it for Virtually Live 16. We will see you during Virtually Live 17, which will be episode two of season two. <laughs> Until then, keep your feet on these boardwalks and your head in the spruce boughs. All right, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.